by the time this project is finished, this is what the PCB layout will look like. Make sure to hop into Altium Designer and follow along with this tutorial. Hello everybody, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're going to be looking at how to send a UART connection over an ethernet cable using an RJ45 connector. Now you're probably wondering, why would anybody send a UART connection over an ethernet cable using RJ45s? Well, the reason is that this is commonly done in data center environments where you have an IO server that connects to multiple pieces of network equipment, usually switches or routers. This is usually done so that you can control multiple pieces of equipment from a single interface on your desktop. So basically what we're going to do is we're gonna start with our USB to UART converter. We're gonna use that COM port connection to then translate into a UART connection, send that out over an ethernet cable. And to do that, we're gonna to have to add a line driver to that project. So make sure to hop into Altium Designer and follow along. Let's get started. So in this video, we're looking at how to create a serial connection over an ethernet port. So the reason we're doing this is because in an upcoming video, we're gonna create an ethernet switch. And the way we're gonna interface with that ethernet switch very quickly and easily when it's inside of our server rack is to do this over an RJ45 connector. Now, one way you can control and configure switches is over a serial connection. It really is the easiest way to do that type of configuration. And you can access that serial connection over a UART connection or over a serial connection. So we're gonna create a little module that we can plug into our computer over a USB connection. The output will be an RJ45 connector that connects to an ethernet cable. And then that ethernet cable is gonna plug into the switch that we're gonna show in an upcoming video. We'll be able to do all of our configuration um, and that initial board bring up through that UART port. If you've watched some of the older videos on the channel, you know that I've liked to show off some ethernet switch designs that I've done for clients. Well, in an upcoming video, we're gonna show a custom ethernet switch. But in order to connect to the switch and configure it for initial board bring up, as well as configuration while it's running, we need to connect to it over a UART connection. One way to do this is to implement a serial connection over an ethernet cable through an RJ45 connector. This is actually really common in a data center environment, and it allows you to connect to essentially an IO server that then routes to different pieces of equipment that are connected in a server rack. What we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna create a little USB to RJ45 module that lets us implement that serial connection. So what we're gonna do is start initially with our USB to UART converter that we did in a previous project. And you can watch the video for that previous project by looking in the description. Then what we're going to do is connect that to a line driver that then connects to an RJ45 connector. That's going to allow us to implement that serial protocol over an ethernet cable. Once that cable connects to our switch, it's then going to go back into a line driver slash receiver, and then that will connect to the UART interface on the ethernet switch controller. So we're gonna take a look at the ethernet switch controller first, and then I'm gonna show you the schematics and we'll jump into the PCB layout. So on screen, I have the component that we're going to be used as the ethernet switch controller. This switch controller is from Microchip, and you can see here it supports up to 26 ports. Now, this switch controller has a UART interface built into it over a couple of the GPIOs. This UART interface could be routed out over a cable, like, of course, a Cat5 cable, something that you would use for an ethernet connection. And you could do that over a standard ethernet connector. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to connect it to a line driver and that line driver is going to be able to drive that signal over longer distances. To do that, we're going to add that line driver onto our USB to UART converter so that we can access the ethernet port. So we're gonna start with our USB to UART converter that we had in another project. You can see over here on the left, we have our USB connector. On the right, we have our pin header that we were using to access the TX and RX lines on the UART interface. And then you can see here, it puts out a couple of voltages. Now over here, I've modified the schematics to include this line driver. So this line driver then connects to a standard RJ45 connector. And this RJ45 connector is then gonna to connect to the ethernet cable, that'll connect to the switch. Once this gets over to the switch, we're actually gonna see this same circuit on the switch side. And that circuit on the switch side is going to allow us to then receive that data 
and then send it back to those UART pins on the switch controller. There's one thing I need to do here that you might notice that I haven't actually updated in the, in the schematics. Now, if you remember in the original version of this project, the entire point of the project was to add some additional ESD protection to these TX and RX lines. And so you can see that they're right here. We have these two TVS diodes. I also need to swap out the part number for the appropriate voltage. That's something that you can do after the project is done as this is still in a common package. But what we want to do is actually move these two TVS diodes from here down to here so that we're connected on this part of the circuit. So the reason I'm moving these down here like this is because this RJ45 connector is going to be the connector that actually allows someone to interface with this device. So this is the point of failure where we could experience some ESD that could then overwhelm this line driver. Now, once we do this movement, we don't need to have these two TVS diodes on the TXD and RXD nets anymore, so I can just leave these connections like this. However, on the USB connector side, we also want to keep all of these TVS diodes. We want to make sure we keep those TVS diodes here to then protect uh, this USB to UART bridge. Last but not least, one thing that we don't need here is this particular TVS diode. Now, the reason we don't need this TVS diode is because if you look here in the PCB layout, we can see that it's located right here along this 5V0 connection to the pin header. We also have one of these TVS diodes over here on the same net, but by the USB connector. So because this net is not going to route out from the other side of these chips, over this RJ45 cable, and it's not going to be brought out to this connector, we don't need to have D6 in this design. So we can go ahead and delete that. So now that all the schematics are updated, we can update the PCB. Some of the components in the PCB are gonna disappear. That's okay. What we're gonna do is we're then gonna go through and validate this and redo all the placement. And then once we do that, we'll be able to finish this layout. Now, I've applied the update in the PCB. As you can see, the pin header has completely disappeared, and we now have a very large RJ45 connector over here in the PCB. Now, if I look at this RJ45, you can see here's the direction it needs to face. And of course, you can also see that this is a very large connector. In fact, it is too large for the board size as it currently exists. So we need to resize the board. Now, I also don't want this board to be too long. So we may consider just picking up some of this circuit and then just moving it all back towards the USB connector. And then the other thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to leave some room on here for our line driver. So U2 is our line driver. So how can we do this very quickly and efficiently? Well, there are a few things that we can do. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete some of these connections here such as on the USB. I'm going to then pick up a lot of this stuff and just move it over. The other thing that I wanna redo is I wanna reroute these lines here coming off of the CP2102. And once we do that, we can use the selection filter and very carefully pick up a lot of this stuff and move it back. One thing that I also wanna do here is of course shelve this polygon because of course, if you don't shelve these polygons and you start picking stuff up, it's gonna be very difficult to drag stuff around when you're carrying around a big polygon. The other thing that we wanna do is delete these stitching vias. So sometimes the easiest way to do that is to just go to single layer mode and then make sure that you have the appropriate selection filter and then just kind of drag into the area where you see the stitching vias. And then over here on the right, you'll see that the stitching parameters option comes up in the properties panel. So from there, just hit delete. And now you're gonna be left with the intentionally placed vias that you placed during routing. So now that we have all of this, what we can do is we can actually pick up all of this stuff and just move it back. So we need to be careful what we pick up, of course, but we can all pick up all of this stuff and we'll just be able to move it over. So here you see I've left texts unselected. That's because I don't want to pick up some of this stuff like the logo, so I need to be careful with that but I do wanna pick up all of these tracks and vias and components and everything. So once I grab this stuff, I can literally just kind of drag it over like this, and that's gonna create a lot more room on the right side of the board. 
and then we'll do some cleanup and then we can finish up some of these connections that you see here on the top layer. So this makes some room on the right side of the board for both the line driver, which we have here, and the ethernet connector. So my line driver, I think it's gonna be best to just place it kind of like this. And the reason for that is because you can see here, our TXD is right here and it connects over to the left side. And then we have this resistor that goes on the RX line. This resistor is over here. We can drag that right over here, and then you can see where our RX line sits. We just wanna make sure that there's no crossover. We do have a little bit of crossover, but we can handle that through some vias, so that's okay. And then last but not least, I don't need any of these pinout labels, so I'm gonna delete that. And now I think we're ready to leave a little bit of room here for all of our caps and our diodes, and then we're ready to size out the board for the ethernet connector. Here with the ethernet connector, you can see how big the mechanical span is. And so that's given in this mechanical layer in purple. So we wanna make sure that we size this board so that we have enough room on the top and bottom for this ethernet connector. So one thing that I always like to do, of course, is to just draw out the board shape. So make sure, of course, you turn on the snap and turn it onto the board shape. And once you do that, you can just draw out the board shape as I'm gonna do here. So I'm leaving just enough room over the top of the board. So that way I can drag this object down just a little bit. And then once I drag this object down, it's going to nicely center around that ethernet connector. Now you have to be careful here because you'll notice that there's gonna be a couple of drilled holes here. These drilled holes help support that connector in the PCB. So we need to drag up this board shape just a little bit so that we have enough material there to drill through on this top and bottom hole. So that's really important. We wanna make sure that we leave enough material so that we can do that drilling. Now, once we do this, just get a nice big board size set like this, and this should be just fine. So we can go ahead and go to design, board shape, define from selected objects, and we're good to go. Next thing we need to do is set the origin. I always set it in the lower left corner unless there's a mounting hole. And then we wanna make sure that with this size that we have sized this such that we can move these more or less into the center of the board. And so they're gonna be approximately located there already as it is. And then we could delete that rectangle and we basically got our board size. So at this point where we've placed this ethernet connector and where we have all these other components, I think we're good to start placing some of these other passives around the board. And then once we place some of those passives, we can then finish up the routing. So I'm gonna jump in and place some of those passives. We can see what it looks like. We'll finish up the routing and then we're done with this. Now, one thing I wanna do is jump into the schematic and look at something real quick. Now, one thing that you'll notice on connectors like this RJ45 that have a big metal shroud is that the pinout will sometimes list a connection to chassis ground. And that's exactly what you see here on this connector. So you see here on J2, that we have that connection back to chassis ground. So I've talked a lot in the past about what you should do when you need to have a chassis ground connection. Unfortunately, for this little module, we don't have a chassis ground connection and we don't have it on the USB side either. In fact, you'll see right here that there is a connection for the shell and we connect it straight back to ground so that we get a nice low impedance connection on this piece of metal back to our system ground plane. If we had a chassis connection somewhere, meaning if we had a chassis ground and we had a connection to a piece of metal in our chassis, then we would wanna connect this shield to that. And then we could connect our mounting hole either to the chassis ground or to the system ground. In this case, we don't really have a choice. We kind of have to go from the mounting holes and the chassis ground directly to the system ground. Like I said, this is gonna be a small module. It's gonna plug into a computer and there's really not any room in the device for a big metal chassis. Also, there's no earth connection to mount that chassis. So normally you would use the chassis ground in a device like this to provide safety in case of a large ESD event or if there's a system fault. But unfortunately in this case, because there is no earth connection, there's really no way to implement that unless you were to connect your system ground directly back to earth. And earth connections are not meant to carry return current because of course, the user interacts with it, they're gonna get a annoying shock. So in this case, we've made the connection just like this and we've done essentially the same thing here 
on the shield. So I know that there were some questions about that in the previous video in the USB to UART converter project, and we've taken the same strategy here with this USB to RJ45 interface project. So I took this layout home, took some time to finish it up, and this is what the finished product looks like. So on the left side, you can see here we still have the CP2102 and the USB connector on the left edge. And then here in the middle, we have our line driver. And then on the right, we have our RJ45. Now, if you just take a look at the schematics, you'll notice I actually swapped out this uh, particular connector with a different part number, um, but we're basically using the same pin arrangement. One thing that we could do with this is we could actually play around with the enable and the invalid in order to then power up these yellow and green LEDs that are on this connector. So that could give us an indicator of when this chip is getting power and ready to transmit, and then if there is also a fault. So that's something you could play with on your own time when you download these project files. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. And if you want to access the design files for this project, make sure to check out the link in the description also check out the blog that's in the description. You'll also find a link to download the files in that blog. Thanks again, everybody. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.